Well, that was the end of Saab. Obviously, uh, he talks too much, and we ran out of time on Zoom. So, bye bye, Saab. Please, Thanks Saab. for coming on. Yeah, he's the first person to blow that up. <laughs> Passionate man, Saab. Very much so. Well, Pete, let's get into our runners and results from last week. Right, we had three runners at uh, Ballarat on Monday, Darren, and uh, what do you know? They all lobbed up the number two. Three seconds. To start with Loudspeaker, who probably got under the guard of everyone a little bit. She uh, struggled to keep up. Flash time ran second. A thousand metre race. I must admit, um, listening to the race in the truck, um, after they'd gone 200, I was thinking, uh, when does the next online sale close? Because she'll be in it, uh, which I think was on the Wednesday. Um, but uh, as soon as I thought that, she's... Uh, Peeled out and flew home and probably could have nearly won if she had got out when she wanted to. But um, talking to Mitch Freeman during the week, um, I think he was as shocked as anyone. Um, did say that in a trial when she missed the kick, gave him a little bit of a hint she might be a get back run on horse. And uh, certainly it was a nice, pleasant surprise, Pete. <laughs> had she had a one, I think we would have been all scratching our heads. But um, it's anyway, look, it's good to see. And, you know, obviously uh, with the way Mitch has gone about it, and uh, with the change in tactics, uh, there's probably a couple of wins in her now. Well, she's going to win a maiden for sure off the back of that. Otherwise, uh, you'd hate to be feeding the eight behind her. But no, she was good. Uh, I, I don't know which order. I think La Pietra was the next race. And she uh, was just beaten by a better one. But she ran really well to run second herself. Yeah, she was first up. I mean, all these Ballarat horses were first up on probably more. Most of them will prove to be un over unsuitable distances, just resuming. But while well, Pietra's bred to run a mile, first up, 1,200. Uh, she looks super. She's a nice filly. Um, unlucky not to have won a race by now. But, yeah, she got beat by a pretty handy horse. And I think it was a big gap back to the rest of the field. So I'd say she'll start favourite wherever she goes next up. Yeah, I got a cheeky little text I did uh, after this next race. How are you guys travelling? It was from the Alexander Stable. They actually won the race that La Pietra got beaten in. Of course, the next one we're talking about is the one they trained for us called Supreme Thunder, who just petered out in the last 50 metres when he looked like he was going to win. Um, but it was a terrific debut, over 1,400. Yeah, well, I didn't get that text. Had I, I could have easily dropped in and picked them all up and taken them up the road to Matt Kamani's, couldn't I? Um, yeah. And it was Matt Kamani, I think, that beat us in that race, Pete. Um, yeah, it was, yes. Supreme Thunder ran second and... I think it was just race experience. I think our horse is still learning. Um, but, yeah, ran super. And once again, big gap to third. He loomed as the winner, um, but just either petted on his run or didn't know how to put him away. But uh, nice horse. Probably a good thing he didn't win first up or we would have been... Um, the phone would have been ringing from all the buyers for Hong Kong and then we would have been having to deal with that. So, look, he's, um, he's a nice horse. He, he can gallop. And um, I think it won't be long before he's winning a race as well. No, exactly. And I, I think you're right. He got a bit wayward and then he sort of changed stride and laid in. And yeah, it was just a matter of a uh, bit of race craft. He'll be winning. He'll be winning shortly. Uh, that was a Monday, Tuesday, obviously Melbourne Cup day and an, a, uh, another great day. And well done to Joy McNeil, who's rode a lot for us winning the Cup. But we had a little bit of success without winning with, uh, she's a good run by Serious Suspect in the last to run third. You don't often run 183 and Get beaten half a length. Yeah, no, it was a good run first up. Um, obviously, we were a bit concerned first up over the 1,200. Um, things had to go his way for him to be in the finish, and they certainly did. I think the, the no crowd there was a big plus for Serious Suspect, just nice and relaxed, probably more like a trial day. And, um, you know, jumped out. He needed to get to the lead. He needed to just travel kindly and be left alone. And Brad was told not to go for him until he got to the 400. Um, and I think he waited till less than the 400 and went for him. And for a couple of strides, he looked the winner, but the other two, you know, just had him covered probably. And I think he got beat about half the length, but I was more impressed by the fact that, you know, he's, he's been a horse that can overdo it a bit and um, he can sort of get his head cocked on the side a little bit, but there was none of that there on uh, Tuesday. And you know, he, he's really dived at the line to run third in a, in a listed event. So he stakes place now and uh, ran enormous. And um, I think about 25 people asked me in the morning, was he any each way chance? And I said, not for me. So 
I'm just consistent on my tipping ability, Pete. <laughs> but I, I, was, I, was, I was wrapped. I was just wrapped for the run. I was wrapped for the owners and wrapped for the horse and Saab. Um, he said he was going the best he's gone the whole prep, you know, this time in. And, yeah, maybe he's just finally matured into a nice, tractable racehorse. So let's hope he can do it again down at Packingham on Cup Day. That Dominus, he's just... He was probably going to get beaten a length, a length and a half when they got to him. You know, and that was 150 out. And yet, you know, on the line, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't going with him, but he wasn't losing ground. He's just a tough racehorse, you know, real genuine racehorse. He's, great, he's one of those great horses, yeah. Yep. Um, we had no runners kite and cup day. Thursday, we had a couple of runners. We had uh, Mr. Moneybags, uh, who missed a run in the, Country series for running the 1800. Um, was never going to win after 100 metres. Ran seventh. He ran good sectionals, um, but was never going to win for where he was in the in the running. No. So, he was no hope after they got 100 metres. He's out the back last. Um, I think three or four times he's settled to the rear of the field. And he, even though he runs good time, it's just mathematically impossible yeah. to get over the top of him. And, you know, I think the instructions were to have him won one, but um, he was going to get caught wide. And as soon as he decided to go back, um, they grabbed hold and yeah. he was sort of yeah. made to look like a fool. But you know, I think he said off camera or on camera that he was, in hindsight, he should he wished he had a push forward. But then if you push forward and they kick up, you look like a mug anyway. So it's a 50-50. Um, and it's the first time I think he's ridden the horse. So... Um, look, the horses' sectionals were good. Um, he's just turning into one of those horses. I don't think he's won for two years, Pete. So, you know, he's just turning into one of those horses that's uh, very frustrating. Um, a horse that loves Flemington was collect is collectible. Um, we went to a 58 of South Australia and just thought we're going over to collect their money last run. And Willie Pike was keen to ride her again at Flemington. You can see why. She's half a half an ounce of luck. Gets out a little earlier. She's well, I think ran six, beaten to touch over a length and flash time. Yeah, look, it, it's not easy to go to Adelaide and win. Um, everyone thinks you're just going to get on truck, go to Adelaide and win, but it doesn't happen. I mean, no. I think if we went back through our last 20 horses that we took over there, they probably all got beat. Probably got to go um, back to plate. You know, I'd have to go back. <laughs> go back a long way before we had a winner in Adelaide. It just doesn't happen. Um, I don't know whether it's the trip, the travel, um, different riders, uh, what it is. But anyone who thinks you can just duck out of Adelaide and win a race, you want to think again. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know what happened that day, but she was never in it. Um, but, look, yesterday uh, she was very brave. Obviously, 1,600 short of her best. Um, she gets run off her legs early. She, that get back run on style. Very hard to win. You're always flashing late, looking like you're going to win over further. But and then you step them out to further and they walk again and then you still can't get over the top of them. So she's a very hard horse, um, you know, to, to get winning. Um, but I'm sure on that run, um, you know, she's screaming out for 1,800, 2,000 now. That was a special race yesterday worth half a million, the English bracelet. Um, it was for English paid up horses only. We knew 1,600 was short of the best, but there was so much money on offer, we had to have a throw at the stumps. And we ran sixth and get five grand. We'll be. <laughs> they could be their own worst enemy, but we've seen a few. We've had a few with that style of running, Darren. Like, you know, Yogi was out the back horse. You, you, you're in the lap of the race. You're in the lap of the speed gods. And if they're not there, probably eight times out of ten, you can't win. No, no, you, yeah, that's right. They tease you. They really do tease you, yeah. those sort of horses. Yeah. Anyway, we had some promising results there with our winning. Our place, we're up over 40% for the place, Darren. Just need to nudge that win ratio up a little bit more, which is just under 10. Oh, I think there's a, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious there's a few there that are breaking the next to win a race. And um, I think those, those new horses coming through, once they learn how to put it together yeah. and have the kids seasoned up, I think, um, get to their right distances. I think, you know, there'll be quite a few winners there over the next eight weeks. Yep. Right, I will whip through our upcoming runners. We've got three at the ball today. We've got one in about... One's, one's on its way to the gates, Pete. Three minutes. That's uh, Street Baby, who's... She's about third or fourth pick at eight or nine dollars. There's a 
It's a strong enough 1700 metre maid, but she, she was good over the good at the end of a mile race at Ballarat, and I think we'll see her figure in the finish. I don't know if she can win, but she should run well. Yeah, 1700. Um, I'm probably wishing she was over 2000, but um, she's on a home track over 17. Um, it's a strong enough field. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple of handy horses in there, so yeah. it's never easy this time of year, but, you know, I think she's um, she's probably a 2000 metre horse, so if she can run top four today, that'd be, I'd be pleased with that. Because she handles on Mick Price's horse, does a lot of riding for him, and we've got Dean Holland on. Um... Later on, we've got Cracksman and Maisie Motion in the same race. Now, Maisie Motion comes off a good maiden win, but does step into a fairly strong 64. I think Pat Ryan sort of thinking if she can run top three or four in an open grade 64, that she can be well placed to go to a Phillies and Mares race after today. So, probably not confident that she can win, but confident that she'll run well. And Cracksman's first up off a good trial. And I think Lindsay's a little bit glass half empty with his uh, pre-race. Just stating a top four result will be good for a mile and a half horse going forward, which probably makes sense. Yeah, well, Cracksman, we bought online, um, was previously trained by Danny O'Brien, came home, had a month off, been down with Lindsay for probably eight weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, first up, 1,700. He's a proven 2,500-metre horse, so... I know he trialled up good and whatever he does today is obviously going to improve on. Um, so for him to say he's a top four chance, I'd probably respect that. Maisie Motion, I thought she was pretty much unders on the tote. Um, yeah. I think around $6. I thought she, she was a $10 chance in that race. Um, but, I mean, if she, if she does run as well as she did last start, um, I think she, they claim it a little bit on her with Laura Lafferty. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd, you'd want to see her sort of once again somewhere in the top four or five, if you want to go on and ro run in a, you know, good good city class sort of Phillies and Mares race. Yeah, well, she gets four or five kilos off the majority of the top half a dozen. So, you know, she, she certainly want to, wouldn't want to be six or eight lengths behind them. She needs to be somewhere near them and finishing off. We're about a second to go. We'll keep chatting while they're going into the gates. Um, Motley Prince is... I, I think it might be the race after, Pete. I think it might be the 2.30. Oh, well, here we are. Got a, well, it was 2 o'clock. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, you're right. It is. Race three. Oh, well. Half an hour before that happens. Uh, Motley Prince being dual nominated, dual accepted, should I say, for Geelong tomorrow. And Maui on Monday, which looks an absolute, an atrocious race. So, oh. <laughs> uh, it's a weak race. I don't know which way they'll go, but I'm maybe thinking, maybe thinking Maui. But anyway, they're gonna they're gonna wait until the morning. I think yeah. they might have their mind made up tonight, but just gonna wait till the morning to see if you know half the field's not scratched at Geelong. Yeah, well, look, his run was okay first up, probably certainly better this time than what it was last time since he's yeah. been gelded, and he's certainly working better and looks better. Got these, um, but up I think. Too. Blinkers. Yeah, blinkers. And, but I think, it, you know, he really does need to show something oh, wherever absolutely. he goes now. Yeah. He, he needs to tell us that he's, he's going to win races and pay his way. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, abroad in Ireland, Nass, Nass, how do you say that? Nass, Nass, Melbourneian. I haven't seen the final field, but one of 38 nominations there, over 2,400. Obviously, it's been to the sales and rebought and some have stayed in. Yeah, some of them stayed in, some have popped it out. Um, I mean, the bottom line, I think this is the last flat meeting for the year, Pete. So I think he's probably just having us throw out the stunts because the yeah. last two runs have been really good with no yeah. luck. And I think the last time I looked, at, it was a heavy track, which she loves. Yeah. So he's probably just tempted to send her around and see if he can win £10,000 <laughs> before he puts it in the paddock and uh, gets her ready for April, May next year when the flat season starts again. So... Yeah, right. That's what happens over there. They only race on the flat for six months of the year. So I guess you've got to take your chances. And, you know, with COVID and racing sort of being delayed this year, it's been pretty much a waste of time over there. I think she's only had the four runs. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been really difficult. But uh, hopefully, look, credit to him, um, Tony Martin. Um, 
when you got that horse, it was right and lunatic and was pulling and hanging and carrying on and field shy. And now it's just, you know, in that last run, it was just running, racing like a normal horse is what you'd expect. So he's finally got a mind right and a body right. So we just need a bit of luck. Yeah, no, she's been unlucky not to have won one. So hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed. Uh, so that's Sunday night or uh, it would be Sunday morning probably. Sunday in our act, we've got the Arrow Cup meeting and actually the, the big money race on the Arrow Cup day and has been for ages is that uh, time-honoured China Bowl and that's where right your name goes, of 80 grand. It's a good prize. Best up, isn't he? Yeah, yep. Barrier four, Neil Farley riding. Oh, well. Um, he's been working the reports, well. The reports are that he's going as good as ever. He's yeah. uh, come back in good order. So he does go good fresh, this horse. Um, so I'd, I'd expect him, you know, to be to be racing really well there in, uh, first up. So tricky track. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. know what gate he got. What but Barry did he got drawn? Drew four and 1,300. It's probably not a bad scenario for him because he should be close to the speed. Yeah, you've got to be in the first four on the bend there, or you know, I hope so. There's no rain forecast, should be back on a good four. Yeah. Um, it'll be, you know, suiting on pace runners. And if Archie's got him anywhere near right, um, he should be in the finish. I think he had a good gallop with Gamay the other day, and Archie was pretty happy with the work. So, yeah, fingers crossed. I, haven't, I don't know the field, but uh, he'll shape up as one of the better chances. Periscope at Hamilton. Obviously, we scratched from the two-mile race at Echuca, which was good because it was 35 degrees and a good bloody two and a half. And Pat ended up winning the race with one of the thing that we beat home at Sonata, Super Legra. Um, but he's saved for... He's going to get plenty of cushion at Hamilton. It is a highway. Shane Jackson's on, and Shane just got beaten on him at Warnable. So, look, 2,200. Not You would have preferred 24, but, gee... He's going to be hard to beat. Has to be hard to beat. I love that. Um, if he handles coming down the hill, yeah. um, which is always a trick at Hamilton, if he can handle coming down the hill, um, you know, he'll, he'll be a massive chance. And I think he made the right call not going to the two-mile rock-hard hot date, you know, because we spent so much time and effort getting this horse right. We just didn't want to bring it undone. So better off to uh, take the safe option, I guess, and just try and win that maiden. Yeah. Yeah, and it's off 25,000, not uh, whatever it was, 12 or 15, it's an art. So, uh, no, good choice. Um, you got these trainers thinking about what they're doing. That's what you want because, like you said, it's been a lot of work and effort and probably three years of training to get this source to this stage. Um, well, I suppose just on that, Pete, um, you know, just on that, um, you know, this. The Ma Eustace stable elected um, not to uh, nominate Southern France for the Melbourne Cup because they felt it wasn't seasoned and conditioned enough, this prep, because after Sydney, he was gelded and he had some minor surgery done. And they sort of knew he was going good enough and he's a Melbourne Cup type horse. And they certainly were tempted to um, nom him. And then once you nom him, you kind of get forced into it. But when you look at Tuesday, you know, it was quite yeah. warm. The track was very firm. Um, and I think David and Karen were kind of at odds what to do and they left it to the vet and the vet said, well, you can run, but you won't have a horse. Now, I think that just was the right advice. Yeah. And I think Tuesday proved that with how hard that track was and how fast they went. I think it was the fastest Melbourne Cup, the second fastest Melbourne Cup ever. And it was the track was screaming. They were running that quick. So I'm glad we didn't fall into that. And I'm glad we didn't fall into running Periscope to Chuka. Um, both horses will benefit from that in the long term. Absolutely, yep. Um, Bendigo, we don't know the fields, but there's nominations for La Pietra, Hasseltoff and Sea Princess. I don't know if any will go there, but uh, we'll know more Monday about them. Well, La, Pietra's bust, last, La Pietra's busting to win. Um, sea Princess was super at Mornington the other day. Uh, once she gets out over 14, 1600, she's busting to win. And uh, who was the other one? Hasseltoff will love that big track at Bendigo. Yeah, well, he went around on that heavy tennis sale, which yeah. probably if hadn't been a cup day, they wouldn't have raced. So, um, you know, he's a quality horse and um, back on top of the ground, you know, all, all three of those horses, yeah. um, you know, probably all start favourite and get flogged. <laughs> and down the track, all got the potential to win in the city, probably, at midway class at least. Yeah, I would have thought so.
So that's all, and Barrett, that's, that covers our runners. So hopefully we can um, kick off half a dozen runners with a, a winner or, well, good runs anyway. I don't know, it's hard to say we can get a winner today, but they should all run well. I don't think there's a horse at the moment, Pete, that we've kind of earmarked to, to be moved on, and we've moved on a lot of horses this year. But right now, I don't think there's one. There may be Motley Princes at the crossroads here, yeah. the only one. Yes. Um, Scared loudspeaker um, out of it on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in good shape at the moment with our yeah. horses. And I think there's quite a, any one, one of about six could win their next start. So that's that's where we want to be. Um, now, we did run that, uh, for those who didn't want, did not watch the Monday episode, uh, we ran a trainer's competition <laughs> on the Melbourne Cup tipping. And um, I think 24 out of our first 25 trainers actually submitted their Melbourne Cup tip and they're uh, hardest to beat. Now, there was a few there that couldn't follow instructions. So um, <laughs> I, feel, I filled in the hardest to beat, in fairness. Um, not one of them could tip the winner, Pete. Not one of them could mention Twilight Payment. Uh, so it just tells you, don't it? They, they know their own horses, but they don't really know the others. Nah. Um, but, yeah, well done to Jai McNeil. And, you know, look, you've got to admire Lloyd Williams, um, Twilight yeah. Payment. Ran last year, didn't look much. Had been in fifth, um, just dominated the race. And there was a lot of mail for that horse um, floating around. And one of our trainers actually rang me Monday and wanted to change his tip to Twilight Payment because he got the mail that was going to win. So I said, no, nah, too late. We've gone to air. So he said, stuff it, I'll just have 500 each way, which he did. Paid $26, <laughs> if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, I think I, in my first four, I think I ended up with first, second, third, Fifth and six, so uh, true to form. And the one that um, cost you was one you thought may was the chosen one slipping into yeah. Well, it ran good in the Caulfield Cup, but yeah. to be honest, the firm track, the firm track put me off it. Yeah. Um, you know, but oh, it's such a tough race. You know, horses run well without winning or get bad rides or just things don't go right. It's I don't know. It's just a hopeless race to try and win or yeah. tip the winner. It's very hard. I think from the trainers, I think a lot of them ticked Tiger Moth to be the danger. Well, that's what he was. He was the danger to the winner, but not good enough to beat him. So he's a nice horse going so they, all, they all got a bit excited when they found out the first prize was um, <laughs> ATV were going to commit to um, spending 50000 with them on a yearling. Um, so if they bought a 200 grand yearling, we'd take a quarter. That got them motivated. But uh, <laughs> no one won, Pete. No one won. So we get to keep. There was no... Robbie no. Griffith said, well, I tipped, I tipped second and third. Surely I got the most points. I said, no, mate. No points. Winner no. take all. No winner, winner take no all. Prize. Right. You, don't see, um, you don't see Tats Lotto, if no one gets six winners, you don't see him giving <laughs> that prize away, do you? No, they won't hand their money away too quickly and we're going to be the same. Yeah, no. Now, what happened had, on the tipping? Yeah. Where are we at on this tipping comp? It's, we did uh, actually have a couple for the win. No, sorry, one person, uh, Yvonne McMullen. Tip Twilight Payment, but you'd only tip one winner in the previous six weeks, so that might tell a story. Uh, Good on her. Yeah, and yesterday there was nine that found personal in the Oaks. Um, so we now have a situation where I think it's Richard Wilson and Louise Vaughan on 22 points, and Eddie Cook's on 21. Michael Byrne from Queensland will be kicking himself. He didn't enter yesterday. He's on 20. Mm -hmm. And the rule is. If you miss a week, got to play yeah. hardball, he's out. So I think the numbers have gone from about 130 to 50. So it might be a last man standing. <laughs> How many weeks to go? What do we got? We got two, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, and then the Zipping Classic finishes it. Oh, the last two, right. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, we'll so it's tied at the top. There's three or four people within two or three points. So if you can find a couple of winners and you're half a dozen points behind, you're a chance. So... Uh, well, I think um, I think Yvonne deserves a prize for uh, tipping the Melbourne Cup winner. So, right, eh? uh, yep. let's get let's get her details, and we'll send her something out. I think to, for one person to pick the Melbourne Cup winner out of that whole comp, I think that and and given that none of the trainers could do it, no. um, she job. deserves a prize. I think she deserves something. So, let's get her details, and we'll post her out something. Beautiful. Uh, not much more. Obviously, thanks to young Dane for doing his phantom call. I don't think he found a place getter, but he <laughs> he he he, uh, he does a good job, Dane. He bloody 
like I said, he's not the 13 year old boy now. He's got the man's voice and he's very, very easy to listen to. Good. Yeah, no, he's a gun. He's a yeah. gun. He's going to have a long career, I'm sure. So well done. And we thank him and we must look after him, Pete. Must not yeah. let that slide under the radar. And in the sweep, what happened in the, yeah. the sweep? Did you get 24 entries? I got about 30. Two, so I, I, half a dozen or eight people actually didn't get a horse. So, uh, right. so who got Twilight Payment? Uh, yeah, it was Mike Bennett. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, he won the five and he was pretty happy about it. So Marley and myself actually did the Facebook Live draw. And uh, that was entertaining in itself, doing the draw with Marley. Oh, something, yeah. something that should have went for one minute, went for about six. She's so he gets every... a voucher for his next purchase. Yeah, yeah, no, he said, and I hope I uh, pick correctly, and the next purchase is a champion. So, uh, $500. Well, he had a bit of bad luck. What's he had a bit of bad luck with, he, he's in my Shawnee Choice, isn't he? Yes. And that was scratched, it was yeah. sore on uh, Thursday, so it missed the run. So, um, we're waiting to find out if there's any update from the stables. So, you yeah, might no, need that voucher sooner or later. Yeah, no, he was. Um, Does he, he know what he good. can't use it? He can't use it to pay his vet bill. <laughs> I was just going to say, I mean, maybe his 5%'s not $500 in a vet bill, but yeah, I think as we speak, the horses at Ballarat. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I've got to probably pick it up in the next day or so. Yeah, it's a shame, but that's the racing game. Yeah, well, he's an eight year old and he's been a great horse. Let's hope it's only something minor, it's a strain, but we'll, yeah. we'll have an update out as soon as we know. Yep. Nothing else, Pete? No, I don't think so, Darren. We're uh, going out the farm Tuesday, going to photograph and film the yearlings that uh, are growing every day, and no wonder with the spring we've had. So we'll we'll probably have something out on those three by the end of the next week and have a chat to their trainers. Well, hopefully, um, I think I've got one more mare to get in foal, and um, I've got four more foals, and three of them are due this week, next week. Yep. So... Finally, that part of the job will be over. Yeah, well, we're trundling through November. It's just hard to believe. Actually, this time next week, I was, we would have been at our Christmas party, which is obviously uh, a non-COVID event this year. So this seems strange because we're generally flat out getting ready for that. But I don't know how we would have fitted it in this year, Pete. Well, I was just thinking the same myself. Like, it's amazing how you do when you have to, but yeah, yep. anyway. Well, cup day, I spent 10 hours in the horse truck, so I don't know how I would have been if we had to run. How'd you go with your uh, with your um, travellers on the way home? You had to go to Geelong to pick a couple up? Uh, yeah, I poured them into the car. No, they weren't <laughs> too bad, actually, in fairness. Um, they weren't too bad. They were pretty good, actually. I think they had a nice, quiet day. And uh, Liz had a bag full of coins. She cleaned up on the punning, tipping oh, comp right. they had there. So, Very good. Um, I think, yeah, she ended up with the, the takings. So Beautiful. she was uh, very pleased with herself. Excellent. Excellent. All right, mate. Well, thanks for that. And uh, thanks to Saab Hassan for uh, his long, expansive answers. Um, next time we'll allow two hours. Um, and we'll have to find a new guest for next week. Um, there's still a few trainers we haven't had on. So yeah. we'll uh, sort that out. But um, thanks for all the feedback on, on those trainers. And um, at some point, yes, we will get a couple of jockeys on. And have a chat to them. So um, we'll just have to work out how to zoom the camera in so we can we're, see. We're going to have to tilt, tilt them, Darren, tilt the old laptop for it. We'll get them stand on chairs. Just for those that haven't got a horse with Saab, yeah, communication levels, it's it's about five or six minutes every post-race or pre-race, and, and there's not a stone unturned with him. He's, uh, he's a passionate man. That. Yeah. It's a great story. So please, if you watch the interview, because... Um, no one wanted to know him when he turned up, and uh, <laughs> he employed himself. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> and even though he didn't have a horse, even though he didn't have a horse, he rented boxes. <laughs> so he could get the plumbing. Right? He was prepared because uh, he got knocked back. No, look. Be, be careful of the horse sales, Pete. Be careful of the horse sales. He'd probably just go and put a head collar on one and take it home. And <laughs> this is hey, a law with him, I reckon. Uh, look, I think it shines through in his attitude, Darren. He, um, he, he just... He's very, he's very refreshing. Yeah. Very refreshing. Yeah, for sure. Nah, all so good. When, he, when he rings, when he rings, I have to put 20 minutes aside. Well, there's a few times I don't answer the phone because I know he's ringing straight after a trial to say it's gone this, this and that. And, uh, no, nah, yeah, I mean, we, we have a bit of fun with Saab and he takes it on the chin <laughs> and 
he's doing a good job with that all serious suspect. So uh, he reckons. Uh, I still love that little. He throws all that trigger out about fourteen hundred. Oh, he can run a mile. <laughs> Anyway, Gunners will put him on the super lucky as soon as he could put him like that. And um, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that uh, you're in line for a free pot out at the Royal Meredith wearing that hat. I don't yeah, know I've done well today, haven't I? I actually accidentally picked up the wrong hat, but wherever you are, Damo, it won't be long. Once that bloody door's open, we'll be back for an episode, yeah. I reckon, early in the new year. He's got the door open, don't worry about that. The beer garden's <laughs> fine. All right, until next week, I'm Darren Dance, Peter Morgani. Good luck in the final day of the carnival. Um, if you're down, get it back. If you're ahead, don't bet. Yeah, quit. <laughs> See you guys.